Hey y'all. Just got out of surgery. I don't even know what time, but I went in at 6.40. Like, actually into surgery at 6.45. Maybe 7 o'clock. And then I woke up at 6.45 in the evening. Um, <laughs> central. So, as some of you might know, I had a tummy tuck. Breast augmentation. Breast look. A small breast implant. So my boobs are already big. And he just made them look way more perky, as you can see. I don't want to get flagged by YouTube, but... um, When I woke up, I didn't feel that much pain. It was a lot of discomfort, but not as much pain, if that makes sense. Because um, you still have your anesthesia and stuff inside of you. But the one thing I did want to know is my tummy tuck dream was bothering the heck out of me. Like, I, eight out of a ten, the annoyance was out of a nine. It was really annoying. Um, but the nurse checked and my pain pump wasn't on. So she put my pain pump on and that definitely, literally took the pain away. Um, I also have other pain medication that I'm going to be taking. <laughs> so... I think once I, you know, just stay on top of my pain meds, I'll be okay. And, um, yeah. That's really... Surgery was... It was a surreal experience, to be honest, because I was full of anxiety, but I was praying heavily. I was listening to a lot of gospel music, and I was, like, listening to my scriptures. And I just felt, even though I had anxiety, I just felt a... a a sort of peace from God because I'm a believer in God so I really felt a peace from him that everything was going to be fine he's in control I'm not in control he controls the doctors and nurses everyone so I felt some sort of solace and well not some a lot of solace in that I get out of breath very easily I had a beat fat transfer to my butt tummy tuck rest with with augmentation. So I'm trying to keep the chemistry. It's just it's just so exhausted. My body's like not with it. Um I'm sorry I'm whispering. I just can't talk loud because I just, I literally can't talk loud. Literally can't. So my nurse, I think his name is Alejandro, fine as heck. Child, when I told you I was about to be like can I take can I go home with you after this? He was so fine, so fine. Brown skin, close to dark skin, just a fine chocolate man. Damn. Mm. He did my IV. The IV does her at first. So once you actually get in the washroom, like after maybe like 10 minutes, it doesn't hurt really because you kind of get used to the feeling. But when he first puts it in, it definitely is annoying. It hurts. So I would say at least a four or five out of a 10. But, um, he washed me, I got naked, <laughs> and he literally washed me with the medical wash. Um, it wasn't that bad, honestly. Like, I know I saw some girls wash, it was like, oh, they wash you in there, like, in a ghetto. It really wasn't bad. Like, they put you, it's a container, but it's plastic over the container. So you're not actually stepping onto a concrete container or a steel container. Um, they wash you. They wash you with um, a medical wash, and then um, he pours warm solution over you to cleanse you. They don't really dry you up except for your socks. So I sat down. They put the socks, the compression socks on me. I felt fine. Then, then I think that's when he put the solution, the sedation in because I started feeling tired. I'm like, what the heck is going on? But Dr. Velasco, as well as other dolls who have went to him, told me that they say tequila when they start putting it in. So he had asked me when he marked me up. He was like, do you want, um, you like tequila? I said, no, I like cognac. <laughs> so he said, okay, I'm going to tell them to say cognac. But they didn't say anything. They didn't say tequila or cognac to me. So I didn't know I even got the sedation because I had the IV already in my hand. So I'm over here like, why am I drowsy? But obviously I put two and two together. So eventually, I lay down, and I was out. But I remember waking up, like, early before I really was knocked out. And I remember seeing them laughing, joking, talking. And I was like, hey. I don't know what I'm saying. But I was, like, trying to talk to them, like, what's going on, y'all? What you doing with me? 
<laughs> sorry i can't laugh but um then i finally knocked out like i was out like light. i woke up during surgery it's really not bad like it really feels like a dream and you don't feel anything i woke up during surgery i felt them he must have been light boing me dr velasco because i felt it going back and forth and i was like oh my gosh oh my gosh but like it's really not bad because it's like a dream like you fall right back to sleep i don't even know when it happened in, during the procedure i just know i felt him light bulbing me um and they have a sheet over your head up and up anyway so you can't see like anything gross or weird you know what i mean that'll scare you um so that was a good thing i finally woke up it was 6 45 p.m when i came in around that time for surgery in the a.m pain like i said it was a lot of discomfort but the and i and i kind of got that cold feeling like everyone says but not really like it was like shivers but it wasn't anything that i was like oh my gosh because the nurses were really good at picasso they put a heater on me they put two heaters on me actually and they put a blanket on me and remember you're naked you only have a diaper on so i only had a diaper on and i had my well i had um stitches on my boobs i didn't have the faha bra on yet so then i'm like okay Sorry, y'all. I'm on a breath again. So, I woke up and I was like, the first thing anyone's inkling is to do is call their loved ones. So, I called my mom. And, like, when I was talking to her, I started crying because I was just like, God is so good. Like, I wasn't crying because I was sad or anything. I was crying because God is so good that he allowed me to get through the surgery and many others. And it, it's a trying time when you're preparing for surgery. It's a mental thing. I'm still going through it as I'm talking to you guys. So it's not like all is well after surgery. But you feel way better knowing that you're alive. Okay. So, and that goes along with picking a safe doctor. And I trusted my doctor. I trust God, obviously. So God was number one. But I trusted my doctor next. So that just puts some sort of solace in my healing process and just my emotions. Um, right now. I am in Picasso recovery room because I had a tummy tuck. I have to be in here for overnight, so I'm probably gonna go to the recovery house tomorrow. Um, I need to tell y'all about the day of my surgery at the recovery house, cause like, girl, it was ghetto. I just gonna miss my surgery. I really did. Like, I'm gonna tell y'all. I just can't talk a lot right now, but probably tomorrow or another day, I'll tell you guys what happened, cause. It was ghetto child with a lack of instructions. So um, I'll fill you guys in. Let me know if you want to hear the story, child, because that's definitely a story time. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to go, guys, because talking a lot is getting my chest tight and I don't like it. So I'll see. I'm on the flat side by the grace of God, y'all. And um, continue to pray for me, even if I look well, but somewhere else. Because as you know, surgery is an everyday thing. Even after you get it, it's a, it's a mental, physical thing. So you got to just stay prayed up for real. Here is my father. Child, he snatched me. I'm not going to lie. I can't see the whole thing because I'm just so bruised up. But he snatched me. He did. This is a pad. My boobs. I told you, you got my boobs already. But... I'll, show you, I'll get you guys a better video tomorrow, probably. Because I literally cannot get up by myself. So, because of the tummy tuck. That's like the worst part right now. So, I'll let you guys know in a few. The nurse that saved my life. You're going to be on my YouTube, Paula. I love her. Te amo mucho. Mi favorita nurse. Okay. It's muy bueno. You come to Picasso, make sure you ask for Paula. <laughs> Day three. It's Wednesday. I got surgery on Monday. I feel very weak. Um. I was dizzy this morning, but I didn't faint. I just kept my eyes open and they gave me alcohol to smell. Two things keeping me good right now is God and my daughter. I'm really, this is, this is 
probably the hardest thing in my life I've had to do. Um, but my body looks so good. I, you guys can't see it, but I'm definitely trying to show you guys. Before today is over, I'm going to my massage now. And I just keep thinking about life. All you have to do here is think. <laughs> but I'm thinking good things because I'm so glad that God is watching over me. That's like the main thing I'm thinking about. And I remember I used to watch vlogs of girls on recovery like, why they can't keep the camera still? Yeah, and girl, I know now. I know. It's a lot of work. Even holding my phone up right now is feels like I'm doing push-ups. No joke. My breasts don't really hurt. It's more of a pressure on my titties. My boot, my booty doesn't hurt. But the tummy tuck, not the cut. The cut doesn't hurt. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. The drain. And just like the tightness. I need to be in my fire, but I'm not in my fire right now because I'm going to a massage. Um, but I like being in my fire because it's tight. And I feel like my body swells up when I'm not in my fire. And I'm waiting for one of the nurses to walk me downstairs because I couldn't do it earlier. I had to eat and like drink pineapple juice. And, um. Yeah, I had to eat and drink because if I didn't, I was getting dizzy. So I sat down for a little while. But y'all, uh, the body smashed. But I can't even like enjoy it just because of everything I'm going through. But I'll be back, guys. I'll try to record my massage, but the way this tummy tuck is set up, je ne sais. But I'll try, guys. Hi. Not because of the massage, I cried because I felt like the recovery house just like dropped me off at the, um, Dr. Blasso's office. Like I was a package and it made me, it just everything bubbled up and I cried and I called my mom and I'm going to talk to them about that because I do love the nurses and like they do treat me good but there's certain things that the overall owners should make sure that's done that I feel like it's not being done um and it's been a an interesting day I feel much better today Maria did my massage she's very good she's very gentle feels so good I'm like I can't do the whole on my knees thing I have a whole tummy tuck and my boobs on so to give you guys a hint of what the massage room looks like, or one of the massage rooms. It's really clean, nice. So Dr. Velasco's office. I'm also gonna get my pain pump removed because it's empty. So, there's a lot going on. I think I'm about to get my period too, so that might be a lot extra emotional, but like I told you guys before, and I'm sure you heard, it's a mental process. I've been praying to God like crazy <sighs> because I'm just over it. But like, I'm never gonna give up. God is so good. So, taking it day by day, y'all. Uh, I'll log back into the field. So, my body is just all pads. <sighs> my boobs feel fine. It's really my stomach. And my back is killing me. My boots feel good actually. I mean, they still feel a little heavy, but there's nothing compared to what it felt before. So I'm happy, I'm grateful for that. Here is my belly button. Looks really weird, but I know it's gonna take a long time, a couple weeks for the Dutch Great Show, what it's gonna look like. This is day seven, y'all. Today, yesterday was not a good day. Today is not really. I'm gonna be better, but it's not the best. I just want y'all to see what kind of car they got me in.
last night in bed. I felt very hot. And I was like stressing out. It's been like an hour. It's so hot. And my nurse over here was sleeping. That's what I be talking about together. Okay. I don't need nobody. Oh, my first shot. Hey guys, day seven still. I wanted to give you an update to tell you what Dr. Velasco said. I'm not sure if I recorded this already, but um, last night I had a 100 degree fever and Dr. Velasco told me, I had an appointment with him this morning. He told me to start taking antibiotics last night via WhatsApp. He was very responsive. I love him so much. So today in our meeting, he basically was like, um, I shouldn't say meeting, it was a follow up. He basically was like, um, my body's healing great. He doesn't see any infections, but we're gonna continue the medicine as a, a precautionary measure. I don't know if you guys can see, but my right boob is mad swollen. Like, it looks, I just noticed it, it was crazy. But um, even from that, I was able to get prescribed iron pills. So now, um, so I've been taking, not iron pills, it's like a, a powder that you put in water. So I'm taking this iron medication and it's helping because I had the fever before and I had the headaches. So I'm not trying to walk around and just be active and not lay in bed. I'm sorry y'all, this swelling is crazy. Can you guys see that? It's like Wumble is chilling. And the other move is like massive inflammation. He joined the recovery house, okay, y'all? And I got a lot done, right? I got a BBL, tummy tuck, breast lift with implants. So I got a lot, okay? We all can tell. Here's my thing about the recovery house. I feel like they won't do something unless you tell them to do it. Like, for instance, the reason why I just had to cut the video off is because one of the nurses came in here and she wanted me to take my antibiotics and you have to sign for it, right? And so it feels like a, a freaking business transaction, but whatever, I get it. You sign for it. My bed is a mess right now. You would think that she'd be like, oh, let me fix your bed for you and get you in bed or whatever the case is. She just, I signed the paper, this girl walks out like nothing. And it's starting to get me because I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you how to do your job, you know what I'm saying? Because at first they were really good, but when they're bad, they're bad. It's like, it's like certain days things are good, certain days things are bad, or certain nurses are better than others. And it's really annoying me, and I, I want to switch my recovery house so bad, but I know she's probably not gonna get my money back. And I still have seven more days left. Today's Sunday. I'll leave next Sunday. Like, probably I'll leave. My flight is at six something in the morning, so probably leave here like three ish but i want to make a whole video in a recovery house actually i might even put it all in the video but this is just like get up hi y'all i got a lot to update youtube about so basically i had low, low hemo it's a nine it's supposed to be like a 12 and up like on a normal basis it's supposed to be like at least 11 and I was doing really bad. I was fainting, I was dizzy. I was just like depressed. It was really, really bad. And um, just having these bad headaches at nighttime too. So 
I spoke to Dr. Velasco yesterday. I had an appointment early in the morning. And he told me, oh, and I also, had, sorry, I had a fever of 100 degrees. Um, you know I was freaking out, child, because one of them had sneezed at me the other day. I was freaking out. So if you know me, you know I'm a hypochondriac in real life. So I think everything wrong with me, like, outside of the situation. But I had an appointment for Dr. Velasco yesterday at 11.30. He told me to take my antibiotics, so I did. Then he told me um, that he's going to prescribe me iron because my hemo is a 9 and it's supposed to be like an 11. So after that, it was, you know, I was still struggling. But this morning, I woke up. I, well, sorry. Let me, I'm talking way too fast. Last night, I took my first dose of my iron. Basically, it's like a powder that you mix in water. It turns it like brownish reddish. So, um, I drank that, took my regular medicines, my antibiotics. He said I didn't have any infection or my body looks great, like nothing was wrong with it, but he's making me take the antibiotics as a precautionary measure, which is fine. But like, between us girls, you know, all these antibiotics on your hoo-ha is like the worst, you know? We all know what you can get from that. So. It's been a journey trying to adjust to that, but today I had a blood test. I took my blood work, and on top of that, I'm trying to think. Of it. I took my blood test, and they took my drain out. I was so happy. Paula, say hola. This is Paula. Hola. My Frevita nurse, my favorite nurse. She's been taking care of me a lot. I've been struggling, but I feel better. I do, I feel better. And I'm just sitting here, <sighs> ready to go home. It's Monday. My surgery was exactly seven days ago. I'm exactly one week post-op, so I only have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so six more days to go until I see my baby girl and my mom. I'm so happy. I'm so blessed. I miss her so much. Um, and I'm trying to get them to move me to a single room, one of the rooms over here. Because it's on the first floor and I don't want to be on the, the stairs to lie. So, hopefully they'll let me do that. Um, also, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, they took my drain out today. So no more drinking. No more drinking. I'm so happy. And Velasco told me to stop sitting on my butt and my hips. I have to rotate. So he said every hour rotate. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, when I'm knocked out, I'm knocked out. There's no rotating. So I'm trying not to sit on my butt for too long. Like right now I'm standing. Just because I feel like it's just better if I stand up, you know, versus trying to. Oh, sorry. Versus sitting on my butt all day. They gave me a pineapple smoothie. A pineapple and apple smoothie. Because I just need more fruits. I'm tired of rice. They even rice and potatoes or like with like, you know, different proteins. And I need vegetables, so I complained and said that I need vegetables because my hemo is very low. I can't be eating that kind of stuff. Like fried chicken and stir fried rice. Like, where they do that at? But today, I feel good. I do. But I need to take a shower because I stay. Alright, y'all. I'll log back in after. I'll log back in. This is day, sorry. I don't even know what day it is anymore, y'all. When I edit it, I'll figure it out. It's Monday, so I think it's day seven, but who knows? All right, bye. Maria is the best. Muy bueno.
Hey guys, it's day, I don't even know, hold on. I think it's like day 12. I'm... Hey guys, it's day 11. I had to like stop the camera and look at that up because the days are like mashing together But at this point. But I'm on the porch right now. It's like a little hot, but I'm taking out my passion twist because I'm so tired of this hairstyle, y'all. Like I'm so tired of it. Like. I just want my regular hair right now. But, um, sorry, I just had to show y'all the ghetto. So, I went to go get a Faja today at Skin Look, right? And they was bomb. They Faja was bomb. I recommend them 100%. And they have to modify mine, so they're not going to be ready until tomorrow, and I'm sick about it. But I was able to get her to do tomorrow instead of m Monday because I'm leaving on Sunday. So, that was a blessing. But this is the Faja, not this, this came from Skin Look. But this right here is a Faja that I got from Dr. Velasco's office. And when I tell you, it's not his Fajas, but I guess the company he partners with, trash. Like you need to get your own Fajas before you go to his office because these are not good at all. And I really feel like after trying the Skin Look Fajas, I feel like I'm wearing like the cheapest version of it seriously like so i really just need to this is advice for anyone going to velasco please buy your faja your own fajas before your surgery this way you don't have to worry about running around trying to find a faja and all that stuff like it's really annoying and the fajas are very cheaply made this is the brand right here they're trash just so you know, this is the one I got from Skin Look. It's amazing. It's the bra. Oh my god, it feels so good. You could just feel the difference um, in the quality, like on your skin. And I only paid. I got two bras, two bra fajas, and I got one stay true two faja, and I only paid one hundred and thirty two dollars US dollars. So, um, which came out to like five hundred thousand pesos or something, which is nothing, right? So that is what I recommend for you guys. And also, um. I feel like I want to go home so bad. I'm just over it, you know, like, I feel like I'm by myself out here because I am. And look how uncomfortable it is. I just want you to see. I'm wearing pads under this because it hurts so bad. That's how cheap it is. That's how bad it is. I'm wearing so many pads so I don't, like, burn myself. I shouldn't have to wear pads on my car. I, sh I shouldn't. But anywho, whatever. Um... And I'm just really excited to go home and see my daughter and see my mom. Like, I'm so hyped. And I'm about to just honestly tell them to take me to the Faja store to see if I can get something that's ready for today. Because I really need something right now. Like, ASAP. So, um, I'm going to try to vlog that as well, guys. But I went to do a check-in. Oh, by the way, my tummy tuck. My tummy tuck is good. I can set up myself now. I can do a lot of stuff. I can take a shower on myself now. I just can't like really, you know, get to the crevices and stuff like that. But um, my boobs are doing really well. Um, I'm getting my stitches taken out tomorrow. So I'm going to try to record that. I just don't know because I'm very eerie about blood and stuff. So I'll see how I feel. Um, and then on top of that, I'm trying to think what else. I fly out Sunday. So I like, have literally not even almost two to two days left maybe one day and a half but i'm so excited y'all like the only thing i'm not excited about is my flight from cali to miami is regular first class with those nasty seats but from miami to dallas it's the laid back seat so i'm gonna be asleep on that flight thank you guys so much for watching here are my three weeks post-op results and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell bye